Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. This is a public lecture, an academic lecture, uh, designed to make you think about counselling. And um, we're looking specifically at uh, 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 theological uh, counselling practitioner, uh, Dr. Larry Crabb and his book Understanding People, Zondra in 1987. So it's a critical reflection on this book. So uh, this is designed to make you think about counselling, how you approach counselling. Uh, the things that I say in here I don't necessarily accord with. Uh, they are said to promote thinking. It's for you to go away and study the topic and to come to your own conclusions. So this is not a dogmatic lecture, this is a lecture that encourages you to reflect. And I'll give you the bibliography, uh, J. Adams, The Christian Cancer's Manual, Baker Bookhouse, Grand Rapids, 1973. J. Adams, Competent to Counsel, Baker Bankhouse, Bookhouse, Grand Rapids, 1970. Carl Bart, here now, Routledge, London, 1946. D. Bonhoeffer, Life Together, SCM, London, 1954. L. Crabb, Effective Biblical Counseling, Zondran, Grand Rapids, 1977. L. Crabb, Understanding People, Zondran, Grand Rapids, 1987. H. Eirich, Curing the Heart, Mentor, Rothschild, 2002. W. Mack, Instilling Hope in the Council, Lee, Council Lee Ward, Publishing, Dallas, 1994. Henry Nowen, Essays in Pastoral Psychiatry, Harper and Rowe, San Francisco, 1969. So those are some of the biblical bi bibliography resources that you can go and read. So we're going to look at his book, Crab Understanding People, uh, which is a, one of the key books of Larry Crabb on his counselling method. So let's come before the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day and for your grace and your love and your blessings. And Father God, I pray that you bless this lecture in your name and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Crabb begins his book by saying that, in his opinion, most people are defensive and proud. He believes that much of counseling does not actually help people, but in fact reinforces people's defensive attitudes. For example, people are not taught to listen. He believes that much of counselling is guilty of making things more complicated than they actually are. For example, most problems with husbands and wives are down to them needing more humility. Another example is depression. He wonders if it would not be better if people stopped dumping their hurts on others and instead began to grasp the realities of hope provided in the Christian faith. He believes the Bible should be used in counselling, but he believes Christians and counsellors are poor at applying the Bible practically. In fact, some Christians know a lot about theology, but are not practical in application to life. Crab, Crab clearly states this, quote, uh, Crab Understanding People, page 19, Something is wrong. All true theology in its very nature is intensely practical. There is no legitimate separation between the academic, the devotional, or the practical study of scripture. Each is inseparably related to the other. Divine truth is always intellectually acceptable, spiritually enriching and practically relevant. End of quote. It is now that Crabbe really begins to get to grips with things. He makes the point that in the secular world and in the Christian world, there are many competing ideas about human growth. Crabbe poses the question, are we to choose the right ideas? How are we to choose the right ideas? He then makes the point that psychology is based on experience. From here he maps out different types of knowledge. There is intuition, but this is not adequate to learn about people, he says. There is then reason, but reason cannot make final judgments, he says. There is then experience. This is the method most used today. Crabbe gives his conclusions on these three points. Quote, Intuition requires us to wait for subjective certainty to emerge. But people have been sure of error before. Rationalism encourages us to think it through or to rely on the opinions of better thinkers than ourselves. But the best thinkers think differently. Empiricism challenges us to look at the results as primal therapy cured depression in the past. But the data is confusing. 
Every system is haunted by horror stories of damage it has caused, and even if there are results, are there good results in a moral sense? Empiricism can't tell us. End of quote. Page 34, Larry Crabb. Crabb then, go, Crab then goes on to argue that the best methodology is biblical revelation. He challenges counsellors who use nature as well as revelation for knowledge and counselling. For Crabb, the Bible should be used for counselling and not secular psychology. The Bible offers plainness, purity and promises of the Holy Spirit. The Bible is the best to use as it deals with the moral problems and this is the nature of counselling. He believes that most people do not not see how relevant the Bible is as academics have made Bible study theoretical and not practical. Crabb goes on to say that most problems in counselling are about relationships. People are asking how can I find fulfilment in life? How can I raise my kids? Too often pastors are not able to deal with these questions. They have a theology to defend but not a theology to apply. For Crabb this has implications for pastors. He notes, quote, the point is that if the pastor had thought through his doctrine from a different perspective, he would feel better equipped to handle the problems he is facing. If the Bible really is sufficient to address counselors' concerns, then there should be no need for psychologists just to better prepare pastors. End of quote. Page 67 in Understanding People. Crabb believes the best way to use the Bible is to use questions that God asks and relate them to today. He believes that theological seminaries are too full of cold orthodoxy. They are unable to teach students to relate to real people in the real world. He then looks at how the Bible could help in different cases. He uses the case of an exhibitionist. He thinks that such a person is looking for an impact. Maybe he has come to the wrong conclusion of such a view of life. What is needed is to show him that in Christ we have meaning and impact in the world. But says Crabbe, we can't stop at using the Bible for other people. It must be used in our own lives. If the Bible does not change our lives, how can we expect it to change others? Crabb points this out clearly in his quote, quote, The task of a counsellor or parent or preacher is to embody in his or her own life the truth he wants others to hear, and the sentence that describes the truth will be accompanied by a powerful illustration of the truth. End of quote. Page 72 of his book, Understanding People. So what are the weaknesses of Crabbe in this part of the book? I think that Crabbe is too extreme on discounting general revelation, general revelation as a helping counselling. It is too exclusive approach in the Cornelian Van Til Maud. I think Cornelius Van Til Maud, I think an eclectic method is best. Using behaviourist insights is just one way forward. Relaxation techniques and associated training are examples of insight one could, one could use alongside biblical counselling. I say could with reserve. There are many Christians who take this view and Crabbe gives little respect to them. Quote, many Christian counsellors, psychologists, pastors and carers hold views that see theology and psychology as two valid disciplines which bring complementary understandings to human nature. End of quote. Page 83. The strength of Crabbe here is he is calling people back to theology and its practical application. I think this is great and good and is needed. Far too often Christians are either theological or not practical or even despise theology and use the Bible less than the practical issues of life. I think Crabbe's call to use the Bible is wise and healthy. If we do not know our faith and how to use it, then we can't be a help to others. Quote, the biblical counselor must be a theologian, says Crabbe. There must be a passion to know, experience and obey God in ever increasing measure. Always learning and always pressing on to know and experience it is our capacity. Uh, this is not Crab, sorry. So this is um, Eric Curing, uh, Eric in Curing the Heart, Rashad, 2002. He says the biblical counselor, counselor must be a theologian. There must be a passion to know, experience, and obey God in ever increasing measure. Always learning, always pressing on to know and experience God. It is in our capacity, as a theologian who is in the process of growing up in Christ, that we will be able to offer the real answers the Bible gives to those who desire our help." End of quote. In the next part of this lecture, we, we've looked at chapter 1 to 4 of his book, Understanding People. Now we look at chapter 5 and 11. Crabbe then asks the question, who are we? For him, the issue of identity is crucial. Without dealing with this question, we cannot deal with people's problems. He notes there is a dynamic model. This is medical in its conception. 
There is the moral model. This sees people as stubborn rather than confused. The relational model is about seeing people have needs for relationships. So who are we? We are people with reason. We are fallen race. We are the people born of dominion. Genesis chapter 1, 27, 28. We are made to be virtuous. We share in some of the attributes of our maker. God is a person and we share in the reflection of this personhood. God is longing, thinking, choosing, experience. These things we as humans share too. Quote, to sum up, God is an independent person with capacity to long and think, choose and feel. A human being is a dependent person with the same four capacities. Our beginning framework for understanding people can now be presented simply. Each of us is a personal being who longs deeply, a rational being who thinks, a volitional being who chooses, an emotional being who feels uh, understanding people, page 96. Crab then moves on to develop these aspects of personhood together. He thinks that most people are not good at observing themselves. They are not honest with what they see inside themselves. Crab thinks that most people feel looking at themselves. They are in fact in self-denial. He thinks the method of self-examination is dangerous as it can often lead to selfishness. Biblical counseling should unmask the pride in self and help people to look to Christ. Crab explains, quote, as long as we think our problems are well in hand, our natural commitment to independence remains strong. Such is the nature of fallen people. But when we are gripped by an overwhelming self of helplessness in the face of things we simply cannot handle, or misplaced self-confidence is badly shaken, dependent trust becomes an attractive option. End of quote. Page 103. Crabbe goes on to point out that, in his opinion, there are few communities who actually show the fullness of God. This is sad, as many people have a void in their hearts that they are looking for meaning, but they do not see the church providing the example forward. He says people have an inner core that needs to be filled. He believes this core can only be dealt with by Christ. He explains, the Lord appeals directly to this deep ache in our core, promising to do for us what no psychologist can ever hope to do. Jesus offers us deep, thorough, lasting satisfaction that affirms our identity and at the same time frees us from self-centeredness. Christ offers life a full core. Crab understanding people, page 105. Crab believes people fill their core with independence from God, but it does not satisfy. He says they are longing for significance and people are trying to gain love, to gain an impact in the world. If our longings do not end up in God, then those longings become tyrants. They make us unloving and unforgiving. Crab has in mind what a healthy person is. He is someone who is involved with others. He wants community, a place of reality and love. But for Crab, this is hardly possible. Far too often people are a mask. They hide their true identity. They conform on the outset, but on the inside they are not what they should be. This mask blocks our true fellowship. So as life goes on, we play our games, keeping our independence, hiding from God and ourselves. Crabs explains, quote, imagine uh, images and beliefs capacity of the rational circle employed by fallen people to maintain the illusion that we do not need God. We love to think that there is no confusion which renders us helpless. We prefer to explain our unhappiness in terms of flaws that we can conceal or correct. We are not impotent says proud mankind. There are things we can do that we believe will lead to life. Satan promises life if we take matters into our own hands and God promises life if we admit our sinfulness accepting Christ as Savior and face the hopeless confusion of life without Christ. Crabbe then goes on to say, end of quote, page 138 of his book. Crabbe then goes on to say that most pastors are not taught to go deeper into the issues people face but if our counselling is only surface level, then it will do more harm than good. It will create legalism. For it's easy to coast along in church to be respectable, but deep down we are full of sin. For crab, we just have to face the fact that people play games, keeping a distance from some, keeping close to others, all in the name of our own desires and games. In these games people play, crab says that they need to be challenged with repentance. Quote, just as entering relationship with Christ can never happen without repentance, so improving that relationship demands ongoing repentance. Sin continues to be our problem, a conquered and foreign enemy, but still an enemy, an active one. He sends 
we sense within ourselves a tendency towards self-sufficiency that is not easily shaken, end of quote. Crab Understanding People, 149. What are the weaknesses of Crab's position here? I think that Crab is too critical of people. He thinks that they are unable to be honest with themselves. I think Roger's person-centered counseling lets them think and deal with the issue they see as relevant. And second, I think Crab's position could easily be judgmental. As he tries to show people's sins, it can mean that it, he might get it wrong. And counselors do not know the hearts of their clients. I think that it is a similar to Jay Adams' method, the notetic nothetic style. This style reminds me of the school bully. We can easily go around and bully people emotionally. I felt uneasy with the style because I thought it wasn't thoughtful to the way people were at in their own situation. I think we should let the individual make his or her decisions and judgments. We can't live people's lives for them. On the other hand, I think that Crab has a great strength here. Crab makes the point that the counselor should live with tr the truth he hopes to convey. I think people are looking for a lead, uh, and if they are counsel, if they see counselors, counsel if they see counseling works in us, they will learn from us. Quote: Many people who seek this is Mac instilling hope in the Council of War, published in 1994, page 208. Quote: Many people who seek need to seek hope model before they can experience it themselves. And what better person to model hope for them than the counselor? The counselor's biblically based attitude of hope will inspire hopefulness in the counselor. End of quote. I also like Krupp's desire to see healthy individuals in the context of healthy communities. I think he is right to say often churches fail to show spiritual reality. And I think also the mask of respectability has to be taken away. We are all hiding and we all need to be honest. Von Hoffer saw this truth. Quote, by sheer grace of God... By sheer grace, God will not permit us to live even for a brief period in a dream world. He does not abandon us to those rapturous experiences and lofty moods that come over us like a dream. God is not a God of emotion, but a God of truth. End of quote. Bonhoeffer, Life Together, SEM, LT Limited, 1954, page 15. And the final part, part 3, chapters 12 to 13. Crab points out that all of us have been victimized, we live in a fallen world and people will hurt us. But if we desire to, afford, uh, to avoid further damage, it will hurt our ability to love. For most people, love is not the bottom line but self-protection. But in the process of protecting ourselves, we lose ability to love, love deeply. But in the process of protecting ourselves, we lose that love to love deeply. Crab is very moved about the person who loves. He is captivated by the person who is self-giving. Such people help us to live and enjoy relationships. In the midst of life, we should be willing to drop our defences and trust God. Crab points, points this out very movingly. Quote, to forsake these strategies puts us in a touch with terrifying pain of vulnerability. At the point of great pain, the temptation to relieve that pain by some means is overwhelming and powerful. If at that point when the urge to rely on self-protective strategies for relief are strongest, we refuse to yield but rather cling to God in dreadful dependency, our character grows, end of quote. Crab Understanding People, page 207. I think that Crab is wise here. He basically is saying we have to be honest. We can't hide from our problems. And now and mentions this and we just can't avoid the need to confront reality in who we are. Now in Essays in Pastoral Psychology, and Rowe, Harper and Rowe, 1969, page 89. Too often we pretend, too often we go with the flow. We do not need to go deeper. We, sorry, we do need to go deeper. We need to get below the surface and show the real us. So here's some basic conclusions. I'm not saying I agree with the book or disagree with the book, but these are just some conclusions that I give for you to reflect on and go away and think about your own counseling, whether you don't believe in psychology but it's purely from the Bible, or what, however you see counseling, or if you agree with secular counseling, whatever, um, these lessons can make you think, and, and I would just encourage you to study your Bible and find out what the Bible teaches about counseling. 
and also to read widely and see what other thinkers are saying as well. Final conclusion. I'm really glad that I read the book. It was a rich experience and I've grown as a person by reading it. The weakness of Kraft's method is that he does not see any value in psychology. But I think psychology only tells us how people think. This has to be valuable knowledge. Second, Crab is critical of people. He thinks people are unable to think honestly, but I think we need to trust people a little more. Third, this method is similar to Jay Adams, and it can be a bit confrontational uh, and lose the personal touch. The strengths of Crab are, first of all, he encourages people to do deep Bible study and practical Bible living. I think too often pastors fails to make the ministry relevant by not applying the Bible to everyday life. Secondly, Crabbe desires the counselors practice the Christian life. If people see Christianity is working in the counselor, then that person will be given hope in the future. The problems can be dealt with. Next, Crabbe longs to see healthy communities, and he sees the problem lies in people building a mask around their lives. The pastor and the counselors should help people to remove their mask and I think this is a good way to build authentic communities. It is for these reasons I think Crab is a brilliant model for counsellors to reflect, not necessarily to copy but to at least reflect on the issue of counselling and to reflect uh, theologically and um, also professionally on the various disciplines of counselling. So it's a good book to get you thinking about what is the actual biblical foundation of counselling but also to engage with secular counselling and to reflect on what you should take or leave within that sphere. At the end of the day, Crab is longing for spiritual people. Karl Barth said, The essence of the church is the event which the Holy Scripture, as he prophetic ap apostolic witness to Jesus Christ, carry through the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, and this is their self-attestation for particular men, so that these men receive the freedom to know themselves as men enlightened, and overcome by this witness. And a quote Bath, here and now, Routledge, London, 1946, page 79. So basically, um, I would encourage you to read the book. I would encourage you to reflect about your own ministry, your own life, how you approach counselling, your the way you see human beings, the way you see uh, God, the way you see Scripture, and how they relate to counselling and how they relate to people will dramatically impact the way you do your counselling. Like I said, I'm not saying I agree with Larry, Dr. Crabb, or disagree. This is a public lecture given to inform you about Dr. Larry Crabb's counselling method and then for you to assess what you agree or disagree with and for you to think it through yourself. This is a theological lecture giving you the resource for you then to think through the issue yourself. And I would advise you to stick to the Bible and allow the Bible to shed light on these issues. All right, thank you for listening, and God bless you.